Hello all. In today's session of parallel programming, we'll be moving on to the next topic related to fundamental laws and parallel approaches. In the previous session, we have already covered the basics of parallel computing, the definition, advantages or the benefits of it and applications where we'll be using that parallel computing. Now coming to fundamental laws. So here in today's session, we'll be seeing two laws. One is Amdahl's law, the other is gustafson barsis law. Now coming to why before going to see these particular laws, uh, first we'll try to understand what is the basic need of these particular laws. And why we, as I told you in the previous class, why are we going for parallel computing to increase the speed, right? So here in order to know the speed up here. So speed up here is nothing but when you take a particular problem, the time required for executing that particular problem serially divided by the same problem when you execute it parallelly, what is the amount of time? So the ratio between executing the problem serially by executing the problem parallelly. So when I say parallelly, you have n number of processes. So here we'll be having n number of processes. Whereas when I say serially, you have only a single process. So this ratio is known as speed up. So in order to row the speed up, how the speed up is getting changed. So we go for understanding these laws. So these laws will help you to know the speed up of a parallel processing. Now coming to the first law, Amdos law. When you go for Amdos law here, uh, let me first tell you, assume this is a problem. This is a problem where when I say a problem or any uh, program to be executed or a problem to be done, you have a combination of a serial part plus the parallel part. So some part of the problem can be done serially and some part of the problem can be done parallelly. So you have a serial part plus the parallel part. So if I take this particular problem, I have the serial section of the problem and this is my parallel section. And when I say I'm executing it on a one processor, so there is no option after my serial section or the parallel section, whichever comes first, you have to execute the next section. So these are to be done sequentially. So the time required for serial execution or when I go for sequential execution or one processor execution, here it is nothing but FTS plus one by FTS. So TS is nothing but the amount of time required. And F is nothing but the fractional part of your serials, serial part fraction. And 1 minus F is nothing but your parallel part of the problem. So this is a fraction of the serial part of the problem. And this is 1 minus F is nothing but parallel part. So this happens to be FTS and this happens to be 1 minus FTS. And the time required is summation of 2. So when I elaborate it, you will get TS. So for serial execution on one processor, the amount of time required is TS. Now, when I go for ex uh, executing the same problem on multiple processor, there is no change in the serial section. Serial section will be done as it is. But when you see this particular section, parallel section, till now you were executing it on a single processor. So what I do now, this parallel section can be divided into parts. So here I'm dividing it into parts and each of the parts uh, is being given to a particular processor. So if you have five process, these five parts are being uh, doing, five parts are being given to five different process. So the time required here is nothing but TP is nothing but time required for parallel execution, which is uh, greater than or equal to FTS is nothing but you have a serial section as it is. So this time is nothing but FTS plus this is nothing but your parallel part. So what is your parallel part here? 1 by FTS, right? And here, why am I writing n? n is nothing but the number of process. So in this example, if I go for 5, it is n value will be 5. If you are using five, 4 processor, it will be 4. So this is nothing but your parallel part. So here, I am dividing my parallel part and each parallel section is given to individual processor. There is no change in your serial section because this is to be executed by a single process. Now, having seen this example, now, what did I tell you at the starting of the class? Speed up is nothing but time required for executing a problem on a single process and time required for executing the same problem on a n number of process. So TS was the time we got it and TP was the time for the parallel execution. So 
TS by TP. So TS by TP, TS value was TS as it is previously. And what did we calculate by TP? FTS plus 1 by FTS by N. And when I go for solving this or simplifying this, I'll end up with this where it is 1 by F plus. So TS will be common in this particular case. 1 by F plus 1 minus F by N. Where F is your serial part, 1 minus F will be your parallel part and indicates the number of processors. Now, you can either write the speed up of the AMDOS law in other case. As I told you, AMDOS law is used to know the speed up. And speed up is nothing but serial execution by parallel execution. And here in this case, it is 1 by S plus P by N. So you can either write this S as F and this P as 1 minus F. And one more thing you need to concentrate in this AMDOS law is AMDOS law will be used for a fixed size problem generally. Fixed size problem. Meaning that the size of the problem will not be changed. So it is constant. So assume I have a problem P and this particular problem I am executing using three process. So this is a graph related to your speed up and the number of process. So my problem size P, if you are executing on three, the speed up will increase. The same problem P, if I am executing by four number of process, the speed up will increase. If I execute the same problem P with using five process, the speed up will increase. But ideally you think that as you increase the number of process for a particular problem P, the speed up, this is the number of process and this is your speed up. So the speed up goes on increasing as you increase the number of process. This is in an ideal situation. But practically when you see these situations, this change or increase in your speed up will come only up to a particular point. And after that, after that, after this saturation point, after this particular point, even though you increase the number of process here, the speed up will not be increased. The speed up becomes constant. Why? Because my problem size is same. Even though for a problem size P, for a problem P, if I go on increasing the process to 15 or 20, since there is no change in the size of the problem, the speed up may not increase. So it becomes constant. So AMDOS law is related to the fixed size problem where it indicates that as we go on increasing the number of process, after a particular point, the speed up will become saturated. Now, when you, uh, the, we now just go through an example here. For example, if we see 90% of the program can be parallelized. So I'm just representing it as 0 0.5. So what is your speed up formula? Speed up is equal to 1 by uh, serial part plus parallel part by number of process. So when I say out of 100%, 90% is parallel means how much is your serial part? 10%. So I can just write 1 by 0 0.1 plus what is your parallel part here? 0 0.5 by 9. So whatever value you get 3.57. It means that it is 3.57 times faster than your sequential execution. Now we move on to the next law, which is nothing but Gustafson law, uh, which was formulated by Gustafson or you can even call it as gustafson Barsis law. And this gustafson Barsis law will also be dealing with your speed up, but here the problem size is not constant. So this deals with the problem size, which is variable. The size of the problem can be changed. So when you go for your speed up, it is N minus. N is the number of process. S is for your serial execution into N minus 1. So when, as you can see, as you are increasing the number of process, the speed up will also go on changing. Why the speed up is getting changed? As I am increasing the number of process, N, NP number of process is increased. Your problem size is also increased and the speed up is also getting increased. But when you have gone for um, AMDOS law, as I am increasing the number of process, the problem size was constant. So the speed up was not increasing after a particular moment. Since here the problem size is variable, the speed up will also be changed. So these are the two laws, fundamental laws of parallel programming, which will tell you about the speed up in a fixed size problem and in a variable size problem. 
and related to this we have two metrics one we call it as strong scaling so when i go for strong scaling we say that the size of the problem is fixed so if you just see the size of the problem here it is 1000 vertically and 1000 horizontally which i am executing it on a processor now i go for increasing this to four number of process so what i do is i keep my problem size constant so i divide the problem into such a part that so if i add this is also 500 this is also 500 so if i sum up what is the size of the problem i am getting 1000 by 1000 even though i am using four process the size of the problem is same now you go for an example where i am going for 16 pro 16 processor and the size of the problem you see horizontally and vertically 250 250 250 250 so it is 1000 by 1000 so strong scaling indicates that even though you increase the number of process the size of the problem will not be changed and each of the processor load will be changed first time the processor load is 1000 by 1000 next time each processor load is 500 by 500 next time the processor load is 250 by 250 so strong scaling as you can uh, see here it can be related to your amdahl's law it is related to your amdahl's law now we'll go for next metric which is nothing but weak scaling so what we do in weak scaling is uh, we here the problem size is not fixed we only concentrate on the variable size of the problem so when you are concentrating on the variable size of the problem initially the size of the problem is thousand by thousand and as you are increasing the number of processes this is your four process so just see the load given to each process is here the load given to the process so what is happening to the size of the problem here it is becoming 2000 by 2000 here it will become 4000 by 4000 but when you see the processor each of the processor whether you go for 4 processor or a 16 processor the workload is constant what is the workload 1000 by 1000 so weak scaling will be used in a case where you want your problem size to be changed depending upon the number of process and this is related to your gustafson Barsis law so this is about your fundamental loss and uh, the metrics that are required for your fundamental loss the next thing we here will be saying is parallel approaches and this we you already learnt in your computer organization and architecture where the types of parallel processing can be SISD, SIMD, MISD, MIMD. Now basically when I go for a program, what a program internally contains a data and instructions. So based on my data and the instructions, you can go for dividing your parallel process into four types. So single instruction, single data, multiple single instruction, multiple data, multiple instruction, single data, multiple instruction, multiple data. So this you can even call it as a parallel approaches. So these are the parallel approaches or the fence classification will be using it for parallel computing. Now single instruction, single data. Uh, you have an instruction and a data you take one instruction and one data so if you can just see the what is the instruction here c is equal to a plus b you just load the values and perform so it is single instruction and single data now coming to single instruction multiple data instruction will be same but the same instruction you perform it on different data so just see this example here what is my instruction multiplication so here it is a multiplied b is my instruction but in the first time what is the value i am passing here a of 1 and b of 1 whereas here it is a of 2 and b of 2 a of n and b of n so the inputs what you are providing to this particular instruction is changing that is the reason we call it a single instruction multiple data the next one is multiple instruction single data where the instructions will be same first time you are multiplying with 1 2 and n the instruction is getting changed right so multiple instructions but the single data so a of 1 a of 1 and a of 1 your multiplication is a single instruction but you are performing it on a single data multiple instruction and single data now when you go for multiple instruction multiple data you have multiple instructions here as well as multiple data instructions are also different and the input you are providing to it is also different so these are the various uh, taxonomies or the parallel approaches we'll be using we'll go for the next topic in the next